this story. Uh, last year, at the end of last year, a lady came to me and she said, Pastor Gerald, I just want you to know that I'm not afraid to fly anymore. Now that's interesting. Yep, I'm not afraid to fly anymore because I'm no longer afraid of dying. Um, and it was not necessarily that I was afraid of dying, but I didn't want to die without knowing I was loved. And I didn't want to die and no one would remember me. And it wouldn't be an issue that I live, but because you and Pastor Marquita have shown me the love of God, I'm not afraid to die anymore. Today I want to talk to you about the perfected love of God. God wants me to minister to you about a deeper level of his love that some of us have not tapped into it. Um, love is a quintessential, most powerful emotion that exists not only in this world, but in the world to come, not only in the earth, but through all galaxies. People will do anything to get it. People will do anything to keep it, including taking their own lives. You know, sometimes when people commit suicide, that suicide note at the end says, sometimes maybe now someone will love me. Some, some people will do anything to get it, which is why in certain relationships, when, when the lady or the man tries to get out, sometimes they take their lives because they say, this love that I never had before, you're giving it to me now. And, and, and the thought of me losing that, I, I rather, I rather, at the thought of you giving that to somebody else, I'd rather take your life and take mine too and die knowing that I was loved. It's a powerful force. Love on the good side of things is so strong that it is the very fuel that, that kicks away anxiety and fear and gives a person confidence to do whatever they need to do regardless as to how they perform. Like for instance, I was asking, asking a lady, I was mentoring her son and I said, you know, what is the difference between now and then when I was mentoring him and, and now? And she said, she said, well, the difference is while you were mentoring him, although he still did wrong things, he had a certain confidence. He carried himself differently because he knew that he was loved. And that, that's, how love, that's how love works. Love gives you this confidence, man, to move, make moves. And you don't have to perform. When you have the, the real love, you don't have to perform and act and show representative when you ha have the real love. I want to submit to you that the reason why many believers right now operate, number one, in fear, while we operate in manipulation, while we lie sometimes, while we try to jock for position, while we think we're going to lose something and try to hold on to people, is because they're not really sure of, of, the, of the full love of God. If you're in fear, I, I, I want to question, I want you to go back and find out where, where is it that I'm missing the revelation on the full love of God? If you're in fear, you're missing it somewhere. Someone say, do you understand the perfected love? Turn with me real quick to the book of 1 John chapter 4. The Greek word for that is Telaeo, telaeo, the perfected agape. Telaeo, agape. And see, for believers, we don't, we don't really fully, we know that God loves us, but we're not aware of the fullness, like the, the, the perfected level of it. Because we wouldn't have the same characteristics that we have now. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 says this. And as we live in God, our love grows. That's crazy. As we live in him. In other words, the more time you put in this thing, your love level grows. Uh, um, like, for instance, when you're in this place and you're gathered together with all of us, when you're here, it's like the power of God increases. If you were to stay here for like five hours, you would be so drunk in the spirit that you'd be going out working miracles right now. The longer you stay in it, the more it, it engulfs you. This passage is saying that as, as we live in God, our love, our love grows. I have a granddaughter named Juliana. She's a beautiful young lady, and I love her to life. And she loves me to life. And if it was a 1,000 people in the room, um, and, and, it, and she knows Papa G there, she's going to lead everybody to come to see Papa G. And the same thing with me. Unless Marquita's there, I'm going to come and see my baby, Juli Juliana. And, and, and Juliana, um, she, she, she loves me so deeply and, and I love her so deeply. And, and, I, and I thought to myself, I said, I said, how am I ever going to be able to love any more grandchildren like I love her? I, I don't see it. 
So I talked to Roman Pino's dad because he has, he has multiple grandchildren. And I said, how are you able to love you know, these grandchildren? He says, when you have more grandchildren, your love grows. Isn't that deep? The more time you spend in God, your love, it, it just grows. And then you start operating in this perfected love, which gives you confidence. So you don't have to manipulate anybody. You don't have to perform for anybody. You don't have to jock for position. You don't have to operate in any fear because you know that you're loved fully. First John 4, 17, in this, as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. Now, right now, many of us, we don't really want Jesus to come back because you're scared. If he comes back, you're going to get a spanking. And maybe you might not be able to go to where he is. And if that is you, you have not encountered a true revelation of love yet. This passage is talking about the day of judgment. And what it says is this. It says, uh, so we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus Christ here in this world. Such love has no fear. None at all. If you are afraid of anything, you have not had a true revelation of the full love of God. No fear. Riots. No fear. Pandemic. No fear. Epidemic. No fear. No promotion. No fear. I will be everything that God called me to be. No one can take anything from me. I'm not afraid of losing anything because I have no, I am full and understand that God loves me. The fullness of love. Because God's about to give us a love encounter today. You're going you're gonna to step into uh, that, that uh, teleo agape today. It's going to hit you. And you know if it hits you. It, it's an encounter that has to happen to you. And you can mark the very moment when you move uh, from just knowing that you're loved to the perfected love. Tell someone perfected love is different. It says in 1 John 4, it says... Uh, we're not afraid of punishment, and if we are afraid of punishment, this shows that we have not experienced the perfected love. And watch this, because of it, because of this perfected love, we, we love each other. Because he first loved us. If you have any hatred towards your brother, you have not had a revelation of the perfected love of God. If you have any jealousy towards your sister, you have not had a full revelation of the perfected love of God. If you think somebody else is doing better than you, you have not had a full revelation of the perfected love of God. If you think someone else has been promoted or you're trying to hold somebody back, you don't get love yet. When, when you get love, you understand that what God has for them is for them. And what God has for me is for me. I'm celebrating you and I'm pushing you forward because I don't want your flow. I want my vein. And my vein is full of the perfected love of God. When you have the perfected love of God, you're sure about God's intentions for you all the time. In fact, God gives you a time limit on his love for you. He says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. That means I loved you before you were born, before you knew what love was. And I'm going to love you even when you die. I'll love your children when you're gone. Your children will be blessed and they won't know that it's because of the way that I love you. Hey, Satorosi, I feel the love of God now. Sekomasi. Woo. I have loved you with an everlasting love. And you got to get this word, to lay, to la, e, o, agape. Put my slide up. I want to show you what, what, what the love, what, what this kind of love means. It's not the same love that your wife loves you with. And you know, I'll say this before I get to that. I was talking about in the first service how growing up in the hood, the mark of a man growing up in the hood is not your intellectual capacity. It's not your ability to be scientific. It's not your ability, talking about when I grew up in the hood. It's not, it's not your ability uh, to sing or something like that or to be artsy. What made you a man or a wimp is if you can play basketball. That's right. It's so true. <laughs> she's from like Minnesota. She's like, that's right. <laughs> she's, she's a hood though. She knows. She understands. If you couldn't play basketball, you were nothing. You had a bad week, you were a chump. I remember one week playing basketball and I had a bad week. I think somebody might have even dunked on me. And they lived to, to get through it. 
And I remember thinking, like, it doesn't matter because I got a girlfriend who loves me. It was like, it just made all the, I'm going home to love. I don't really care, and Marquita was my girlfriend, and I don't really care if I perform well or not because I'm sure that I'm loved. See, you come out of your, your character, you come out of your uh, fake representative when you know that somebody loves you regardless as to how you perform. When I see people jockeying for position around me, trying to get my love, the first thing I understand is that they haven't had an encounter with the perfected love yet. Because if you're trying to get me to love you, you haven't seen it. Like, you're already loved deeper than what I can give you. I mean, literally, what I can give you is partial. But what he can give you, my God, what he can give you, put that slide back up. What he can give you is this. Uh, it says, to be made perfect and complete. To carry through completely, to accomplish or finish or bring to an end. That means that when you experience the perfected love, you need no more. You do not need a man to love you anymore. You do not need a woman to love you anymore. You need no more because God says, I'm bringing it to an end. I'm loving you so much that you don't have to go out and compromise your character to get somebody to notice you. You are noticed in the heavens. I love you with an everlasting love. My love for you is so deep that I'm completing it. It says that to complete, to be made perfect. This is the word, this is the word perfected. It says to add to what is yet wanting in order to render a thing full. So God looks at you and he says there are some parts of you that is not full yet, that are not full yet. He says, I am going to render to you to fill up every empty space in you until you are full. Ask the person next to you, are you full yet? Are you full yet? <laughs> to be found perfect. To bring to an end. Let's talk about goals. To bring to an end. Something that was proposed. And watch this. To accomplish. To bring to a close or fulfillment by some type of event. That means that God will cause spaces and places and people to do things and events to do things to show you his love. Last year, I think the year before last, I was driving down the street called uh, uh, Gatta School. I was driving by one of my favorite restaurants, uh, Cafe Java. If you're watching, I want money for this. Cafe Java. <laughs> and as I was riding past, literally, people, st I, I mean, it was, just, it, it was just, somebody texted me from Dallas, I love you. Somebody texted me from Michigan, I love you. Somebody texted me maybe from Atlanta, I love you. All at once, all these loves just come, it was coming through to me. And what was that? What was that? It was the people. But it was God says, I'll use an event to communicate to you. Maybe in prayer you had not been getting it. Maybe in worship you had not been getting it. But I'll use people, places, and things to tell you, Gerald Johnson, I love you with an everlasting love. That's the perfected love of God. And have you experienced it yet? If you did, you'd know it. And you need nobody else. It'll be a want. But it won't be a need. God will not love you any more than he does right now. There's nothing that you can do to make God love you more. And there's nothing that you can do to make God love you less. He loves you fully, completely fulfilled right now. And when you get the concept of that, you say, wait a minute. He loves me. He doesn't love me less when I mess up. It's like, no, I'm not going to mess up anymore. Yeah. I'm not going to be operating in sin because, because you love me through that. The deepest level of love that you can feel is when you mess up. You, you know, I was thinking about, um, about Adam and Eve. Like, God, God, when you mess up, God is not putting shame on you. You have a built-in mechanism on the inside of you that produces shame when you operate outside of his love. Just like Adam and Eve. With Adam and Eve, uh, they, they messed up, right? All of a sudden, shame came on them, and then they covered themselves. God shows up and says, who told you you were naked? I didn't tell you that. That's something on the inside of you operating on the outside of my love that exposed shame. And shame blocks the love of God from coming on you or you perceiving the love of God. So the question is, who told you that you were naked? You're not naked, you're covered. Shame put a false covering over you, but he took that away and gave them a real covering. Tell the person next to you, remove the false covering. Remove the false covering. Who told you that you were naked? And if you're honest, as a believer, if you're going to just tell the truth, 
What's amazing is that when you mess up and you blow it and you sin and you repent and you come back, the presence is even stronger. I don't get it. You ever experienced that before? None of the pastors are saying, yeah. You ever experienced that before? It's like, you know you blew it. You know you should be kicked out of earth and Pluto. You shouldn't be anywhere around anything that's anything. You should be in outer darkness somewhere with Star Trek. But you came back to 655 East Palm Valley, stood up in the front, tried to stay in the back. God says, you can't stay back there. You got to come up front because I got a love encounter that's deeper than your mess. That's the love of God. It's consistent. It never stops. Now, if you get off into some mess, what will happen is you can set your life off about 10 years. Yeah, it's consequences to it, but the consequence is not God loving you less. Oh, man, I hope that you caught that. And that love gives you so much confidence. See, the reason why I set your life off for 10 years is because you didn't get it straight because you stayed in shame. And shame reduces the time uh, and it increases the time of your test and trial. Let me explain this to you. Uh, uh, uh. Lord, Lord, let me get this. Let me, let me say this. It tried to come to me and almost tried to leave uh, about, ah, uh, dog, it, it'll, it'll probably come to me before we leave. It, I just got an amazing, something that came to me, but it came and left. Devil, you're a liar. Or either I'm getting more old in years. <laughs> God's not going to love you any less or any more. So, so his love is consistent, but the disconnect comes, the disconnect comes at your ability uh, to, to, to be aware of his love. Like, you got you to be aware of it. And then when you're aware of it, you move from being loved to the beloved. So be loved. You know how people say, be encouraged. You know how at the, at the games they'd be like, be progressive or oppressive or whatever this. <laughs> Be, what did it say? Be aggressive. You know, Becky and the church and the people in the, they'd be like, be aggressive. Be, be. And then the the football people just get to go, oh, I'm aggressive. Well, be loved. It's a state of being. You got to be. You got to let it happen to you. Tell the person next to you, be loved. Be, be. You are the beloved, so be loved. Hallelujah. You should have something, you should have felt a wave come right there. Be loved. Lift your hands and say, I am loved. I am loved. One of the greatest indicators that a person does not love you is when you get sick and they do nothing. That breaks up marriage couples. First, first is finances. Number two is communication. Three is in-laws. Four is ideas of, about child rearing. <laughs> Somebody laughed at that one. One of them is weight gain. And one is cheating. But you know what breaks up couples a lot? When one person gets sick or something like that, and the other one doesn't care for them. Like, if you're having, I don't know if you know how that feels. Like, if you're feeling bad, and then somebody just doesn't do anything for you, they just walk away and leave you in that mess. You don't love me. That's a clear indication you do not love me. God is the exact opposite. When you're the sickest in sin, when you're the dirtiest, that's when he comes in and says, I love you. His love is consistent. And when you get a revelation of that, you'll stop lying and stuff and stop trying to please other people and stop performing. You operate with confidence. Your faith, the Bible says, faith works by love. The reason why you had not been able to believe is because you don't know that you love fully. And your faith is not working because you don't know, have a revelation of the love of God. If you get this revelation, your faith will be bonkers. Someone say, I am loved by God. Please don't get into a love relationship if you don't know the love of God first. Because you you don't know what you really deserve. And you'll settle for somebody giving you some scraps when God says, I'm the good father that's going to give you the good bread. Say it again, I am loved by God. Talking about this perfected love today. The love of God is pronounced even more when we are not doing well. Ezekiel chapter 16, go there. So Ezekiel, 
Uh, this is like a picture of what happened to the children of Israel when they had stepped outside of the love of God for so long that they had actually been taken into captivity by Babylon, by King Nebuchadnezzar. Their priests had been killed. Their king's thumbs had been cut out, eyes dashed out. They had been in poverty. The, the people who were once a great nation, uh, they are now paupers and beggars. And they're in this land. And, and, and God is saying, like, you know, here I come again. You left me. You start worshiping Molech. You started worshiping Diana. But here I come again. That's how he is, man. Here I come again. I promised you, Lord, I wouldn't do this. And then you did it anyway. Here I come again. I promised you, Lord, I worship, I pray. And then you stopped. But here I come again. Man, y'all feel that? That's the love of God. Here I come again. Ezekiel 16. He's painting a picture for them. He's saying, on the day when you, that you were born, no one cared about you. Your umbilical cord was not cut. You were not even washed or rubbed with salt. You weren't wrapped in a cloth. No one had the slightest interest in you. No one pitied or cared for you. On the day when you were born, you were unwanted, dumped in a field, and left to die. But here I come again. I came by and saw you. There, helplessly kicking in your own blood. And as you lay there, I said, live. This is how God operates. And that word, that the Hebrew word for live was saying everlasting life. It was so loaded with love in the midst of a person still hooked to an umbilical cord. And God says, when I come through, I'm coming through with life. My love is taking you from death to life. My love is taking you from abandonment to life. You don't have to fight anymore because my love is fighting for you and giving you life. And the same life that the Lord is talking about is the same life that's parallel to the New Testament scripture that says everlasting, everlasting life. He said, I saw you all messed up and I came by. And this is like the first season in a believer's life. You know how you were. It's parallel to Genesis 1. Genesis 1 says, uh, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God was moving upon the face of the water and God said, let there be light. It's just how your life was. It was messed up. It was without form and, and void. Darkness was upon your life. You didn't see, you didn't have a revelation. God stepped in and said, let there be light. Anytime that everything is messed up, if you got some messed up situations going on right now, if you got a messed up marriage situation, if you got a messed up business situation, if you've lost things due to COVID, God is coming and He's saying, Let there be life. I speak to the darkness and let there be, let there be, let there be life. I prophetically proclaim as an apostolic vessel before the Lord, Let there be life. Hallelujah. Oh, something's coming to me now. Something's coming to me now. See, 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 just like in Genesis, the Bible says on this day, this happened and this day, this happened. And it's, it kept getting gooder all the way to, uh, to, to, the, to the time of man. Uh, but what happened is as, as he was speaking, the world was turning. That's where they got the, the soap opera, though, as, as the world turns. Woo, tell somebody next to you, something is turning. And let there be light. He said, I passed by you. And I said, I, I dare you to shout that, live. live. <laughs> Hallelujah. But then the second semester came in. And this is where some of you are right now. He, he, said, he said, live to you. But then verse 8 comes, or, or verse 7 comes, and he says, and I helped you to thrive like a plant in the field. You grew up and became a beautiful jewel. Your breasts became full and your hair grew. Uh, but you were still naked. And that's how some of us are right now. R right now, we're saved, but we're still naked. But who told you that you were naked? You, you see? Uh, God says, you were still naked, but, but here he comes again. He says, at, so, so my, my notes say, after this season, after the first season, you will notice that although you are blessed, there are still some areas that you may feel naked in. And here's what God does. When you still have areas that are not complete, you know what God does? He brings a test. And the test comes to you to prove nothing to God. It comes to you to prove to you what's still in you. 
The test, if you're in a test right now, that's the love of God. God helped them to see this. You got to stop failing your test and you got to face your test head on because God is saying, I'm bringing you to a point where you can see the dirt that was still on the inside of the gold so that you can open up yourself and scrape out of you all those things that have been holding you down. There's a new semester and a new season coming that I want to put you on, but that dirt is too low for you. So I'm bringing a test for you to expose you to what's still there so you can get rid of it. That's his love. Whatever area you're being tested in right now is the area his love is growing in. in you. Hallelujah. Somebody's getting a revelation of the love of God today. It's all love. Tell the person it's all good because it's all love. Huh. My God. Please, please, musicians, get on the stage. Mm. Because we're about to experience the perfected love of God. The Bible says you grew up, you were beautiful, a beautiful Jew. And then you jump down to verse 8. Now, now, now back in, in 8, in 8, here he comes again. He says, when I pass by you, what? Again, stay with me. When I pass by you, what? Again. again. Here he comes again. Your man left, but here he comes again. Parents died, but here he comes again. Job left, but here he comes again. Church people hurt you, but here he comes again. He is more faithful than any one that you could ever think of. Here he comes again, Pastor Tyrone. Deanna, here he comes again. Had ministry stuff going on. People got busy doing their own thing. Who cares about that? Here he comes again. And when he comes again, he always says, my reward is with me. He never comes empty handed. Here he comes again. Mata, here he comes again, man. You know how many times we had to pray through stuff? But here he comes again. You got a fresh cut now. That's how you. Come on, Joshua. Smith, here he comes again. I passed by you again, and I saw that you were old enough for love now. So I told you before that when you spend time in God, your love grows. You put some time. God is looking for some people that can stay in this thing. Put some time in it, and he says, now I see that you're ready for love. And, and, and now that I see that you're ready for love, he says, so I wrapped you with, with my cloak. You, you, had a, you had a covering of shame, but now I'm putting my cloak on you to cover your nakedness. And declare my vows. He says, I'm covering you and I'm declaring my vows over you. Meaning, I'm marrying you. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. And I'll never die. So death can't do its part. He said, I made a covenant with you. Says the sovereign Lord. Then I bathed you and washed off your blood and rubbed fragrant oils on your skin. Now before, he rubbed salt on them to purify them. Now he's rubbing them with oil. I gave you expensive clothing. This is, the love, this is how the love of God works. I gave you expensive clothing, fine linen and silk and beautifully embroidered uh, uh, with sandals made with fine goat skin and leather. I gave you lovely jewelry. Bracelets and beautiful necklaces, a ring in your nose. Uh, here's the young adults. See there, Pastor? I can wear them. The, the ring in your nose. I'm gonna twist the scripture. A ring in your noose. <laughs> People be twisting scriptures all the time. I was about to go into comedian mode. A, a, earring in your ears and a lovely crown on your head. And you were so adorned with gold and silver. Your clothes were made fine linen, beautifully embroidered. You ate the finest foods, choice flour, honey, and olive oil, and became more beautiful than ever. That's where you are right now. You are more beautiful than ever now because of the love of God. Now, here's what has to happen. You have to be loved. Tell someone next to you, be loved, be loved, be loved. This is what God wanted me to talk about for this month. 
once my people get a revelation of my love, they'll operate with a different level of confidence. There'll be no more fear, no more anxiety, no more jockeying for positions, no more wondering if somebody's better than me or if someone's gonna be chosen first before me. You are already chosen in him. Nobody else can take your position. Nobody else can be you better than you can be you. And no one else can be loved the way you can be loved because you're you. My God. Are you guys ready to have a love encounter? Yeah. Now the Holy Spirit sent me on this assignment. I didn't send myself. So I want you to go into receive, to, uh, to go into receive mode. And you're about to have an encounter with the love of God. And when you have this encounter, you don't have to be quiet about it. Some of you have been crying ever since I've been speaking. You've been in tears the entire message. That's okay. Let it flow. Just let it flow. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Oh, Astiki, my God. It's the coast of the There it is. As the musicians go forth, begin to receive the love of God. Mm. Mm. Those of you who are watching, lift your hands. Those in the South Campus, lift your hands right now because the love of God is about to bombard you. This love is so deep. This love is driving out fear. This love is driving out poverty. Some of you right now in your bodies, you are being healed right now. Not because of the gift of healing, but because of the gift of love. This love is driving out right now spouses who cheated on each other. The cheating is canceled. The love now is connecting you back to your spouse. This love is bringing back to you the fortunes and the years that the canker worm and the parma worm ate up. This love. Come on, just receive it. Just receive it right now. heavy. Here comes another wave. Ooh. I see the love healing abuse I see the love healing molestation. I see the love in the oil wiping the fingerprints off of your soul and wiping the fingerprints off of your private areas. I see the love erasing. Uh, some of you, for the sake of love, you will even have, you will change your gender for love. You'll, you'll change your identity for love. I see God loving you properly, loving the real you to where you have no need for anything else. You have no need for false love or fake love. The love of Jesus right now. Ew!
return the favor. other men. God is repairing breaches right now. God is repairing breaches. Ha, ya, 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 ya. A lot of men who are hurting. And sometimes when men are hurt, they resort to fantasy. Oh, men, this one's for you. There's a special grace for the male that God wants to pour his love out on you. So what I want you to do, go back into that, that same that same flow of he loves us. And I need for y'all to pray for each other. Just kind of put your hands on each other's shoulder and prophesy to them, be loved right now. Be loved. Be loved. Experience it. Oh, shout out. Experience it. Walk in it. Oh. Walk in it right now. There it is. Walk in it, walk in it, walk in it. Whoa, whoa. You'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. But on the inside of you, everything that we're dead before. Pray for your brother. Oh, oh, oh. King over you. God is singing over you.
we got to go home, you all. As we, as we get prepared to leave, Pastor Mar said she felt of injection. My God. Jesus, you don't need to be medicated and to be drinking anymore. You don't need pornography anymore. Right now, under this love atmosphere, you know that you got to give your heart to him. You got to, you got to, you cannot, you can't sit in this atmosphere and not give your heart to him or give your heart back to him or be a part of a body that he is presently in and he is obviously in. So I want to give you an opportunity. Uh, first of all, if you're watching by line, you, um, what we normally do is you just put, you just put, um, I have decided. You click I have decided and somebody's going to call you and give you a, a new connection, a new relationship with the Lord. If you're here right now, change your version of your life story for his version of you. He wants to, all, he was hung up for your hangups, all the emptiness and all the sin and all the stuff that's got you disconnected to him. He wants to give that back to you, give you life and life more abundantly. And then when you die, you go to heaven. If you want to give your heart to him now or give your heart back to him and be a part of faith culture, just put your hands in the air real quick. If that's you. I want to give my life to him, give my life back to him. If you're in the South Campus, you raise your hands up if you want to give your heart to God, heart back to God and be a part of faith culture. We love you so much. Let's, let's, um, before we get out, we got to handle God's business financially. And you can do that very quick. We can take care of it quick. Um, it's more, you know, if God gave you an opportunity to give, you are super, you are blessed because many people don't have in this season. And God, God, I, I have pronounced on New Year's Day that this will be the year that we're going to give more than we ever have in our lives. And if you're going to give more than you ever have in your life, life before, that means that you're going to receive more to give. So I know my January was already far exceeded my um, January last year. And our church as a whole, we literally... It's so great during COVID and during the time where people are kind of like scarce or whatever, we probably, we brought in not double, but a whole lot more than we did last year in January. And we did a fundraiser last year. God, God is just, uh, he's amazing. You're part of a healthy church. So, so this year, be intentional about your giving. You can give online or text to give. Good afternoon, FCC family. Let's give the Lord a hand of, of praise for what he's done to service so far. I don't know about you all, but I'm glad to be in a spirit-filled church that lets the presence of God just go, and we just go for it. 
what better place to be than in the presence of God where God's love is just going and touching people's lives. I'm, I'm glad to be a part of a church like this. Are you glad to be a part of a church like this? Amen. Well, my name is Roman. I'm a pastor here at Faith Culture Church, and I get to bring your announcements. If you go to myfcc.org, this is where everything goes. Faith Culture Church, go to myfcc.org. If you scroll down, there's a few blocks there that Pastor Gerald already talked about for people that are, are new or they're making a decision today. Scroll past those. And the first one I want to talk about is Celebrate Recovery. So this is a ministry that is going to help people deal with hurts and finding solutions to them and just being in like a, a group of people that are going to help you work through that. So if you want to connect with that, they are launching very soon. I believe it is the 16th. Yes, February 16th. That's in, in a little over a week. Next one we want to go to is the marriage conference. Where are the married people at? I would scream, but I have a mic right now, so I don't want to hurt y'all's ears. But I'm so blessed to be married. Aren't, aren't you glad to be married, what, those of us that are married? Those of us that are not married, you're you're going to be blessed when you get married. It's going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it. Amen. So the marriage conference is, is an opportunity for the married people to get to go and be poured into specifically regarding your marriage. I don't know about you guys, but my marriage begins to get sweeter and sweeter and better and better. It's kind of like your relationship with the Lord, right? And we're going to even repeat what we've done in our own marriages because we don't we don't get it for ourselves just to hold it we get it to help others right some people in your workplace need help in their marriage right some people in your environment where you go shopping need help in their marriage and you get an opportunity to be poured into so you can also bless others that's coming up february 20th that's going to be right here at the north campus from 9 a.m to 12 30. it's at no cost but if you want to uh, donate or leave a blessing there's an option to do that as well and last but not least, we have Understanding God class. Yeah, there's some people here that have gone through Understanding God class. It is, if you want to learn more about God and you want to learn biblical principles and the God class is the class for you. It's going to begin February 28th. That's in a couple weeks. It's going to be seven months long. And the class is $75, but you need to put a down payment of 50, which is due today. So if you're on the fence about doing it, jump in put your deposit if you have an issue with deposit see pastor Corey. i'm just kidding <laughs> that's all let's all stand and we'll be dismissed please keep your mask above your nose as you exit be socially distant and all that stuff i know we're, we're getting a little bit more lenient but still keep your your minds aware of being good stewards of what's going on right now uh posture yourself in a way of receiving a blessing i'm going to pray over us and then we will be dismissed Father God, I just thank you so much for your, your perfect love. I speak blessing over each and every individual here, God. Would you just bless them with all of your grace and your mercy and your love and your kindness and everything that they need to take them through this next week. God, even what they've, they've uh, been ignited in in this ministry time and in this service, may it help them carry over to next week. May they even pour over and pour out into others that are in their area of influence. And God, may people be blessed because of how much you've blessed them. And we thank you for what you're doing in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed. God bless.